Hello again, YouTube. My name is Brie, and in today's video, I am starting part three of my Birdtober series. So if you're new to the series or new to this channel, I am painting these little two by two inch birds almost every day for the month of October. I had originally started with the typical Inktober thing and it didn't really work out. I wasn't really passionate about it. And then I saw some other people doing Birdtober, including a friend of mine from a Discord community, Sydney. And I remembered I had this small sketchbook. It's a two by two inch Hanemule zigzag accordion sketchbook that I had wanted to fill up with local birds, especially the birds that are really common in my area, central Florida. So I am now on, I can't do math. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there we go. Birds seven, eight, nine. And yeah, so just to go over the supplies real quick, because I know that's something I always think about when I'm watching videos and I'm curious. I already mentioned the sketchbook. These are Princeton brushes and the palette, it's the Etcher miniature palette filled with a bunch of different watercolors, but the bulk of them, especially the ones I'm using are Daniel Smith. So with that out of the way, let's talk about the birds. So I will be continuing my series of bad bird facts. Unfortunately, I don't think I have as many interesting facts for this, this particular set, but I'll try to get some more interesting ones next time. I'll just have to find some more interesting birds. So I am trying to still stick with the most common ones. I know a lot of people don't like vultures, but the black vulture is extremely common in my area. So I definitely had to paint it. Um, I really, they're kind of silly looking birds. Um, they're, they have that big roughly feathery neck and then kind of bald heads. So they're a little unfortunate looking, but I think they're still pretty neat and they obviously perform a very vital role in our ecosystem. So I know in states like Florida and Georgia, um, people do tend to call in if they see roadkill because they want it to be cleaned up and that is done in other places. But normally they just wait a couple hours in these states because the vultures will take care of it. We have a large vulture population. In Florida, I think we have black vultures and turkey vultures. They're very present, <laughs> but I don't think we have a lot of turkey vultures in my specific area. So yeah, they're great at keeping things clean. They just kind of hang out along the highways and major roads. It's a dirty job, but someone's got to do it and they do it quite well. So um, frequently I actually see these every week I have to go to the vet with my, my elder kitty and they are always behind the Domino's that is next to the vet. Domino's is a pizza chain and they're always hanging out in the dumpster. So I assume they also clean up after <laughs> restaurants because they are always there. The black vulture though, um, Originally, they were thought to be kind of closely related to the hawks between their appearance and the fact that they are kind of birds of prey. But in terms of genetic structure, anatomical features, and their behaviors, they're actually more closely related to storks. And I, that to me is kind of interesting because storks are typically associated with birth and vultures are typically associated with death. So it, it's interesting that they fall on either side of the spectrum. And we don't have a lot of storks in this area. I know I've seen, I think, a wood stork before. I won't be painting them because, yeah, they're not super common. But wood storks also kind of have that bald head. I don't know if that's common across all vultures or all storks, but it's interesting to me. So while vultures um, are known for feeding on carrion, excuse me, um, the black vulture will also take on live prey if they need to, so they are not exclusive to cleaning up messes. Um, they typically will go after small animals or eggs, so they have options. And while most vultures and carrion birds in general will rely on the sense of smell to detect decay and go for that and find food that way, the black vulture actually relies more on its sight. So apparently you will often find black vultures hanging out with turkey vultures because turkey vultures do the opposite and then they'll just follow them. So they're sneaky little birds, pretty clever, I guess, or just evolved to be clever in that particular way. And they do what they need to do to get the job done. So that's really all I had to say about the black vulture. I don't have a ton of facts and there's only so much you want to hear about the dirty job they do for us. Otherwise, a um, little update on just random stuff. 
I talked about listening to The Sandman, Act 1, while painting these birds. It's one of the ways I kept myself motivated was this audible production that's been really good. So I actually finished that during the second painting in the series, and I'm now on The Sandman Act 2, and I'm still really loving it. When I read the comics years ago, Seasons of the Mist was the one that stuck out to me the most, and that's right at the beginning of Act 2, and it's so good. I just love the way they've produced it. The voice actors they have are wonderful. It is a really dark story, but it's Halloween, so... I'm not really into like super scary stuff, but why not get into some dark things? I also watched the Squid Game. I kind of watched it way too quickly this weekend. Yeah, that that was a ride. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and move on to next bird in just a second. I just want to say that I forgot to mention this in the last two videos, but that little card I made for in between that just says what day I'm on and kind of splits up the videos. Um, the bird there is a fish crow, which is also pretty common, but I didn't know if it was common enough to make it to my list since the sketchbook only has 18 pages. So I love crows. I had to include a crow. So if I get to it, awesome. If not, there you go. That's a fish crow. Finally remembered to say that because two videos and I hadn't done it yet. So bird number eight, literally could have just read that off the card. The next bird, the one I'm working on right now, is the loggerhead shrike. And these are pretty small birds. I think they're about 9 inches at their maximum height. And I didn't write down that in terms of centimeters, so I do apologize. But they're relatively small birds, and they are songbirds. And as I mentioned with the mockingbird uh, in the last video, I believe, we don't have a lot of songbirds in the area, so I really do appreciate their cute little songs. And these birds are adorable. They have the little, like, bandit mask. I thought they were super cute. What I didn't realize about them is they're kind of terrifying. So these little birds are very much predators, but they lack the strong talons of hawks or other predatory birds. So instead, they they have a really sharp beak that they can use to sever a spine, apparently, uh, or get between the vertebra, or they will kind of dive at their victims and ram them into environmental things. So they'll use broken tree branches or barbed wire to impale their prey. And for this reason, they're also referred to as the butcher bird, not to be confused with an actual bird species that I think is related to a magpie that are actually called butcher birds. Um, but yeah, these dudes, a little scary. So might, might not look at them the same way anymore because I didn't know that in advance. Otherwise, um, I learned that they are not great for developed areas. They Their populations have actually been dwindling because of the way they dive for their prey. Um, they tend to get hit by cars. We do have a lot of them in my neighborhood. I haven't seen them swooping in front of cars, so hopefully their populations will be okay here. We're in suburbia, so... It's not too crazy anyway, but I do see them hanging out on my fence. Well, I guess it's my neighbor's fence. We don't technically have a fence, but I'd been planning to get into pond birds on this day. And when I woke up, I went to let the cats out on the back porch to get some fresh air. And there was a loggerhead shrike singing on my neighbor's pool screen and I felt compelled to paint it. So I do see these fairly often, maybe not quite as high on the list as I'm doing it here, but it spoke to me. It wanted to be painted, and here it is. So I know that the Shrike and the one that follows it only took me about 40 minutes to put together. The Vulture took a little bit while longer. I'm not quite sure, maybe an hour. I'm still really trying to stick within that time frame because, yeah, I only have so much time in a day and I don't want to burn out. That being said, I am taking one day off a week. I'm not doing this as a daily art challenge like most of Inktober prompts. Um, I just don't have the energy for that anymore. So I decided that Fridays are a really busy day for me. I'm trying to get videos out on Tuesday and Friday. So I'm doing both filming and editing on Thursday night. And then I figure I'll just take Fridays off. It worked out really well last week because I worked 10 hour days and then we went grocery shopping and then I got to relax and watch the Great British Bake Off. So. I'll probably keep that up. 
And now finally, day seven, we have the great blue heron. These are awesome birds. They're really large, as their name implies. So they stand about at or above four feet tall, um, and their wingspan's like six feet. So they're they're very large birds. And yeah, like other pond birds, they tend to nest in rookeries, which can contain dozens to thousands of pairs of water birds. So they just kind of fit into the whole water bird party, <laughs> I guess. And we see them all the time hanging out at the ponds and retention lakes and retention ponds. Kind of said that backwards for a second in my neighborhood. So we see them quite often. Every once in a while, we also see them just hanging out on the top of people's houses. And they really don't look like the type of bird that should be <laughs> standing on top of a house. But they do that. Oh my god, there's a bug just walking across my desk right now. And I didn't notice that while I was filming. And now I can't stop looking at it. <laughs> stupid, stupid little buggy. And nope, he's coming back. I don't know how I didn't see this. I was very, very focused on my heron. I'm sorry. Like I said, I open the back door to let the cats out and enjoy the fresh air. And then the little buggies come in and they're attracted to the water. So they hang out near my paints more often than I would like. But anyway enough of the gnat. This is about birds. So I don't have too many facts about these birds. They are really quite beautiful. Um, they do have a bit of color to them, but during mating season, they do get more colorful and their plumage just gets so much more full. So you'll sometimes see them with like um, the dark stripe on the top of their head extending into like a little, little hairdo in the back. And then their neck gets this really full lacy plumage. It's really pretty. And then there's another kind of heron in South Florida. So we don't have it here, but in South Florida in the Keys, and it's called the great white heron. And there's a lot of debate about whether it is a morph, a white morph of the great blue heron or its own distinct species. And I checked both my bird book. I have a um, Birds of Florida book and also Wikipedia and both of them reference the same thing so I guess they still haven't technically reclassified it and the debate goes on. So that might actually be eventually two different species of bird so that's kind of cool. Um, otherwise there's also other large white birds like the snowy egret or rather a lot of different kinds of egrets so just because you see a white bird that stands three to four feet tall and looks kind of like this, it might actually be an egret, and egrets are extremely common in this area, including the snowy one, which to me, at first, I'm like, well, we don't have snow. It, it's its appearance. It's not its environment. Mess that one up. So yeah, that's pretty much all I had to say about these birds. I don't have a lot of personal stories about them, unfortunately. Um, these particular birds, they do their own thing. I do like watching the herons wait about, so sometimes I'll just sit by the lake and watch them, but don't really get to interact with them too much otherwise. And yeah, so that takes me kind of towards the end, so I guess I'll go ahead and sign out here. I hope you did like these little birds. Um, I'm not really sure what I'll be doing in the next video, but you'll see that hopefully on Friday. Otherwise, I hope you're all doing well, taking care of yourselves, especially if you're doing an art challenge. Don't forget to take breaks for yourself. And otherwise, I hope to see you in a future video. Bye.